Sambanani. Hello, South Africa. A very warm welcome to Expressions. This is definitely the place for you to air your views. And we want to say happy Freedom Day for tomorrow, of course, because on the 27th of April, we commemorate and we celebrate Freedom Day. And of course, as Expressions, we are at an extremely monumental place. We're here in Clip Town at the Freedom Square. I am your host, Jacqueline Mapala. As you can see, we outside Jobuzage to say Shilo, but one thing remains the same. We continue to have important conversations with the youth of the country as expressions. Now, can just say, do young people understand the significance of Freedom Day? Now, to kickstart our conversations there to Anam Kanji Jackie, we visited the Social Nguva Secure Center where we spoke to some young people who at some point found themselves on the wrong side of the law and are now on the journey to make amends. Here's what went down with the conversations. Now, these are young people who are at this facility because they might have been, you know, on the wrong side of the law. They matter the most. We're touching base with them today. Let's go have a chat with them. So, guys, I, I just want to know, what does freedom mean to you guys as you guys that are currently housed at this um, secure center? Freedom to assess young people in this center means, like, who have access to do like to go to to go to school in this end. There is school, there's also programs that to attend in order for us to express our freedom in a way of like we were outside, ne? Like I've melog school in outside. But then in here we are also allowed to go to school. Um I'd just like to say that um we are thankful for the people that did fight for us so that they can have um, freedom in our lives. And we also think that people that was fighting those days so that they can be free. Freedom to me means like, I have the freedom to say whatever I want. So it's not like in the old, the olden days. Now we have freedom to go anywhere, to be anything we want. But as we hear, we've done some wrong things, but here they don't undermine us. It's a second chance so we can change our life. What do you think about society? Do we have a society that is tolerant, a society that embraces each other on the outside? No. Honestly speaking, no, because in the outside, even if you are doing a good thing and someone notices it, they don't like tell you, oh. but when you're doing bad things, it's when they come to you. Well, let's speak about perhaps when you guys are back on the outside and back in your communities again, what would you do differently then as a young person? Like as a young person, go out and do community service and help the people where I can. Some of us react of, of anger. So here they give us like manage, anger management and how to think before doing, taking decisions. So we have to think more before we react. So what would you do differently when you're back in your community? So from my side, I would like to go back to school because I've stopped going to school, yeah, right. and help my parents. Okay. And you, what would you do differently? I would just go back to school because I was not going to school and respect the people who I was not respecting. Which experiences would you prefer the most? The experiences that you've had on the outside or the experiences that you continue to learn uh, on the inside? Inside here is actually much better because out there the bad friends I had, you see. Hmm. Also, you feel like you sheltered from peer pressure, everything that comes with things such as peer pressure. Yes. In here, they've taught me a lot, a lot of how to be self-independent. Hmm. And then when I go out, I'll go out with the skills that they taught me in here, like welding, woodwork, and the ITC where it involves working with computer system. Then when I'm outside, I'm going to try to make a difference 
because a lot of people like let me say outside there's a lot of tempters when I'm, I go outside I'll make sure that the youth doesn't go like I, I will not like to see the youth going the steps that I went through mm. I'll make sure that they have a better future and like they they take their rights and responsibility seriously. Yeah, what would you do differently on the outside? On the outside, like here yeah, in our school, it's not the same. Yeah, you learn a skill, like I, I am by woodwork. So I learned a lot about woodwork. Maybe when I go out, I will learn more and maybe can start my own business. But I also need to go back to school. We are having this conversation on this show where we are having, you know, a conversation around freedom and what freedom means to young people. Now, I just want to know from you, do you think these young people in this facility value freedom more when they're in here or they've learned to appreciate freedom from the outside as well? What do you think? Yeah, 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 they do have freedom here, but it's not like outside because remember, they have committed crime. You need to, wherever they go, you need to supervise them. It's not like outside where you can go to the mall or go to the shop anytime. Here, wherever they go, they need to be under the supervision of somebody. Yeah, but in terms of uh, other human rights, they do have, they have got, uh, they go to school like any other children. They, they have got, uh, <coughs> they eat, they clothe, all the basic. Uh, needs we provide as a centre. The importance of education at such a facility, talk us through it, because one thing we're having a conversation about freedom, but education is also important. For a young person to be in this facility and still get education, what does it mean? Uh, basically, it means we have a freedom of education and then the rights of the learners are being taken care of because the learners in these facilities, we have quite a number of learners who were dropped out before they came here. We have learners who were struggling at school and therefore were neglected at the mainstream schools. But here we are able to take them through education, looking at their needs. Like we are able to cater for D caps, which is differentiated caps for learners who are struggling, technical occupational for learners who can maybe go as far as from grade six to grade nine. We also have learners who are in conflict of the law, but they are they are from schools where they were doing grade eleven and grade twelve. So we are able to liaise with their schools so that we can, learning and teaching can take place, and we are able to educate them according to their needs. We are having this chat at the time that we as Expressions are having conversations around freedom and what freedom really means. Um, what do you think um, goes through a child's mind psychologically who's cooped up in such a place? Yeah, um, there is, I mean, there's an adjustment period, right? Um, more than anything, you know, some kids live with caregivers, whether it's a family member, an aunt, a mother or a father. So a lot of the times what we see is when they come into the institution, they need a little bit of a transition. Uh, they need a little bit of um, a period to transition, actually. You know, a lot of the times you will see some of them start to act up. Um, some of them become, you know, a little bit more anxious and then they want to call their family, you know, some of them, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, you see that in the form of anger. You know, they start being angry, they are fighting with everyone, um, even with something like school, you know, they don't want to go to school, they don't, um, they don't listen in, 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 in the classes, they don't really take instructions very well. But I think the most important thing, I mean, a lot of the times, once the transition period is done, then you kind of see, you know, the, the child's real self. And then the, the, the anger and the aggression and the back chatting kind of goes away a little bit. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's different for, 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 for a lot of children. Some of them isolate themselves. You know, because it's a new environment, they, maybe they don't know anyone here, whether it's a staff member or, you know, the other children that are here with them, they have absolutely no idea who these people are. So some of them you also see a little bit of social withdrawal also. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us and um, 
You know what, as, as a Youth Current Affairs show, we are a platform for young people and wherever you are, we come to you, which is very important because your voice is what makes this platform and what makes Expressions what it is today. And we have to thank you guys so much and wish you all the best in your journey to redemption and being the people that you guys want to be. Thank you so much. All strength to you guys. Thank you so much. So those were young people who were giving us a lot of food for thought, reminding you, Gokhai, as a young person, that we should never, ever take our freedom for granted. We continue with this also important conversation. After the break, you are watching Expressions. Welcome back, you're still with Expressions and we continue conversations today around freedom. We are asking again, Montomosha, do young people understand the significance of Freedom Day? What do you have to add to this conversation? Do take to our Facebook as well as our Twitter to add your contribution to the conversations we have in Namhlanje. Now, Ujeki managed to have a sit down with some young people who are so fascinated and also added more to the conversation that we have in Namhlanje on freedom by saying, look, if we want freedom, it's up to us as the youth of the country to set the tone and create the freedom that we want for ourselves. I'm so excited to hear more about this conversation. Let's have a look at one written down. You are watching Expressions, your number one youth current affairs show. Today we are commemorating Freedom Month here on the show and we're going to be speaking to young people to find out from them what does Freedom Month actually mean to them, but most importantly, are they truly free? Let's get this conversation started. Yeah, we got the free, you know, and the t-shirts, the blue and white, it's the doves. But none other than that, I, I don't see it, guys, I'm sorry. Um, we got uh, the street lights, we've got tar roads, but we're still living in the same shack in Ali Bullet in Tunya. We're still living in the same houses, in the same conditions, with the same crippled people, old bitter people who are sad because promises were not delivered. Promises are made each and every election. Ah, houses, free education. There's no free education. How houses? Yeah, no, there's a RDP. So I think uh, freedom is elusive to, uh, to the black child. For me, freedom means living in a society that is free from restrictions, that is free from conditions that deprive me to actually elevate myself in any way or form, whether socially, um, economically, financially, but that is living in a society that allows me to access opportunities that will allow me to get to the level where I want to. Um, do I think that we're really free? I don't necessarily think so, because we're being led by people who are fighting a different struggle than the one that we're facing right now. We're not having the same conversations and that's why we'll never be able to effectively have change in our society. So put young people front, hear them, listen to what they want, listen to what they're going through and listen to how they want that to be solved and then try to guide them with your wisdom as the old generation and probably through that we'll have a better South Africa. I just don't think that we are free as South Africa but I also do acknowledge how far we've come and I'm also very positive of the changes that will yet to come um, I think it will happen over time we just need to stay patient especially as, as the youth and another thing also I think this whole thing of financial freedom is very important because we can say we're free and have a free state of mind and all of that but when we're not financially free it limits most of what we really want to do and achieve in life because you, you're not going to have a peace of mind when you don't have money you know you don't have money to start your own business or you do have those ideas but you can't implement them without the money if you look at us as young people of this country, Sibuya generation Yabazalbe to whom were oppressed by the apartheid system. So Tina, we we are experiencing that ripple effect from Abazali because when we are engaging Abazali to uh, about economic freedom, because that's also what we need to entertain Gakulo, because we we can't say we are free, but we are not economically free, you know. So 
you, you have a situation where if I want to be an entrepreneur and you, you, you must then try to convince your family to say this is the path that I, that I want to take. So there's, and the response that you, you get mostly from our parents, they will try to be negative about that thing because no, that's not possible because of the system of Akule Guyo, you know. So we need to reflect back and ask ourselves as a society that are we really, really free? And freedom to me, freedom is liberal. Freedom is being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it with no limitations. However, it's, it's not happening. Um, I'm going to be talking about the un um, unemployed graduates, people who worked very hard to get where they are and they're unable to get jobs after studying. And also with, with that point, we look at the unequal distribution of wealth where we have people who have billions, but also we have a family that doesn't have money. So freedom to me means financial freedom. I'm a young black girl from South Africa who fears that her life might end anytime in South Africa because of the high gender-based violence rates in South Africa. We as the women actually of South Africa, we even if it happens that a man offers a lift seeing you in the streets struggling with groceries. We are afraid of accepting that offer because we feel like, what if this is undercover? What if I'm gonna be trafficked soon? What if I might die? So to me, freedom has to be freedom from freedom. To me, freedom means freedom to live. We have to be free from the fear that one day we will die. One, we will die in the hands of men. We now want to talk about what is the way forward? You know, what can you do where you are in your space as a young person to improve how firstly you, you feel and have freedom expressed, but most importantly, maybe how, free, how you can help other people feel more free in the things that we do. With what uh, we have as a country, as we call freedom, I do think that the golden key that we can use to change uh, the situation that we are in, the golden thing is to uh, change our mindset, if we can really change that, so that we cannot cry over the things that, are ha that have happened in the past, uh, then I do think that our doors will be opened. So we, we need to know where we come from, and we actually need to now fight for the next generation that's coming after us. Because Tina Abbas Albitu, they paved that um, way for us. So we also need to pay for the upcoming generation. I'm a firm believer in socialism, and I believe that charity begins at home. So if we constructively work together as individuals on the basis as we are, if we actively work together into going into a community where we find umuntu estrateni, oh brother, here's a piece of bread, you can do it, dust yourself. I believe that's how we're going to actively fight and win this battle that we are currently facing. Like when you look at, hey, I'm a politician's way too. I think we need the youth la baga kulu, baba bata la baga kulu la bantu. They don't know our issues with. So we need the youth there. Uh, the other thing we need to vote by profession. Nizumfe tu abala uguti. If maybe an artist, we need to put umuntu uh, artist la. Tala be baye zaganjalo uzebati ikanze la ba vote lo ubaba u strictly because bambona uguti. Uh, so I think we need to go back there, vote by profession. If Nabantabas inspire, like uh, the pastors, they are out of the uh, political uh, fraternity. I believe if we could start, maybe look at them, maybe solution would come out there. Whatever outlines or outcomes that we intend to achieve, uh, we cannot achieve if we are not united. So issue of unity is very, very important because you are having you are living in a society where there's always this a group of people who are going to this direction others are going in the opposite direction you know others are talking about the radical economic transformation because the economy must transform to accommodate the black people so that they can also enjoy the fruits of this freedom oh my goodness i was completely blown away by some of the insights and gold nuggets that i got from that conversation with young people you know as much as we continue to commemorate freedom day here in south africa we know that the freedom we celebrate and enjoy today is a freedom that we fought for and as young people we still face so many struggles that we need to overcome and i hope that Gokhae, from that conversation you know that the fight is still continuing we continue with this very important conversation after the break, you're watching Expressions.
It's only so exciting to listen to young people across all spheres of society add so much into the conversations that we're having. Welcome back. You're still watching Expressions Mundomosha. Do young people understand the significance of Freedom Day? We continue. Stay with us and what do you have to say? Have a look at the next insert. I see skies are grey, dead roses too. They all died because of me and you. And I think to myself, where's that wonderful world? Because they're just kids with big <laughs> grown as men who think with their <laughs> and still they think they're kids. A generation of misfits trying to fit in with dislocated communal joints. Weeds in the herbal garden of life trying to get high to fix the crack in the sky, but it's hard to fly with a broken wing. So to get a left, we sniff up our dreams, we sniff up our hopes, we sniff up our features, and we <coughs> sniff up our freedoms. But it's hard to fly with a broken wing, so we drown in our sorrows. A digital generation of microchips, microskets, microwave brains that believe less is better, less sleep, less respect, less respect for self, lest we stop and learn our lesson will be nothing less but lesser beings in the process of being human and remain humane. But it's been a while since we've been human. A people taught to think in a line, stand in a line, but you can only see as far as the head in front of you in a line. So while some seek inspiration in that mirrored line, I seek to inspire with a written line. A people worshipping the cross, the preacher preaches prophet while souls are at the loss. God must be really f***ed off and crossed because these people forgot God and in turn think God for God and now they want to play God. Oh my f***. People living life in a fast lane, youth chasing chasing death, fathers chasing the same s***. They shut up the birth canal. I said, oh my f***. Too many of these rights are wrong. Too many of your rights are wrong. And still I see skies are grey, dead roses too. They all died because of me and you. And I think to myself, where's that wonderful world? So, Mko, we've come to the end of today's episode. And, of course, you had an opportunity to speak to young people um, who were in prison. And I've got to speak to young people who were not necessarily dealing with the same types of conditions or an environment. And it's interesting, the fact that everybody had a different take around what Freedom Day actually means to them. And I think it's such a privilege and an honor and a pleasure to be able to commemorate and celebrate the 27th of April, which is Freedom Day here in South Africa. Because, actually, it was the first time as a nation, black, white, colored, Indian, whatever racial background you're coming from, where we got to elect a president of our choice. It gave South Africans a sense of power, a sense of ownership, and a sense of belonging. And I really hope that these are principles that we will continue to move forward with. Now, we're not saying that just because it is Freedom Day and it's Freedom Month that everything is perfect. We know that there's a lot that still needs to be done and go, but I definitely think that South Africa is on the right path. Absolutely, Jackie. You've said it all. And, of course, what was very nice and interesting to listen to Namhlanjiklama conversations is that young people do say that we still have a long way to go but it all begins with us as young people as in the words of Udatu Nelson Mandela that young people are the future and it was really good to have these conversations with them with Jackie moving forward we thank you so much guys for joining us as we asked you the questions that we were speaking about Namhlanje from all of us here at Expressions till next time in Salegal.